Having two modes of transportation was very important for Kayla and I because of our work schedule. Oftentimes, I find myself having to load and unload the motorcycle from our cruiser lift lift platform while I'm alone. Today we're going to talk to you about some best practices for loading and unloading your motorcycle to be as safe as possible. If you're looking for a general overview video about the cruiser lift product, we'll put a link up for that video which we filmed as well. So this is, uh, we call it Beastie, this is our big 1200 GS Adventure. Um, I'm not sure the exact weight, but north of 700 pounds, especially when loaded with luggage and whatnot. So underneath the max requirement, but, but up there quite a bit. Um, we're going to show you guys some general kind of best practices we've found in terms of loading and unloading the, uh, the motorcycle to the cruiser lift. Um, and most of this is going to be focused on loading when you're alone. Uh, if you do have two people, it's a lot easier. Someone can hold the bike straight and someone can work the straps. But frequently when I'm loading the bike, Kayla is at work or not otherwise near the coach, so I have to do it on my own. So we're going to show you some tricks. Uh, for me, I load the bike while it's running. Um, I like the assistance of the motor, um, but you got to really understand your comfort with your motorcycle and uh, with your abilities to keep it level while the motor's running. Obviously, you've got to work the clutch and the brakes while you're standing next to the vehicle. I don't recommend you ride your motorcycle up onto the cruiser lift. If you're doing this alone, I like to stay off to the side and away from the vehicle in case something does go wrong. So before we start strapping down, a couple things. Straps, good straps are your absolute friend with uh, this type of setup. Um, you're going to want to find some ratchet straps and some straps that have at least a 800, 900 plus uh, thousand or 800, 900 pound capacity per strap. Um, there's a two inch bike master strap that I don't have with me, but I highly recommend and you can buy it on Amazon. It's a beast. They're rated at 2,200 pounds per strap and they are like 25 bucks a pair. Really good investment if you're going to be doing anything with a cruiser lift. We don't have any of the 2200 pound two inch uh, straps, but we do have some really good one inch straps made by Bike Master. Um, these straps also are available on Amazon. I've been using these on uh, to tie this bike up and to tie our bikes up for our um, track days and things like that for 10 plus years. So I have a lot of experience with this back bike master strap. This strap itself is actually about 10 years old and they've never failed me. So they are great straps. Next to it, uh, this smaller black strap, which I'll do a close up to, is a strap you can buy at Camping World uh, for 20 bucks. You'll see uh, at the close up a much different quality of that strap. And we've used this strap successfully. Um, this one's made by Ericsson but they do tend to stretch and they stretch a bit when it's rainy. So you have to retighten them a bit more frequently. I definitely don't have as much experience with these, but in a pinch, these are going to be way better than a non ratchet strap for holding your bike down. All right. So step one in loading your cruiser, your cruiser onto the cruiser lift without a second person is to secure this front lower strap. Now you want to do so make sure that your ratchet strap is started and that not going to let go on you. Usually get one or two rounds, but also that it has some play in it. If you look how much play we have here, uh, that's going to be really important for when you start to uh, straighten out the bike. Next step is to take one of your extra straps. I've got one here, and you're going to use this to hold the bike straight while you're tightening your second main strap. So I'm going to connect this to my other crash bar and we're going to connect that to the cruiser lift. Before we work with that strap though, we're going to make sure our lower strap is in the right position. We're going to do that by pulling the bike straight to level and making sure that we're able to level out the bike properly, which we are. Not too much slack where it's going to fall towards me, just about the right amount of slack, which is right there. We don't want to tighten it too much because when you start to pull the bike center, it's gonna compress the suspension and you don't wanna over compress your suspension or it could damage your fork seals on your bike. 
once we've got that up and level, that strap's holding, we're going to tighten up our helper strap that we installed here to the cruiser lift. Just give that a few turns. Make sure that that's secure. And that looks good. Now we're ready to install our main secondary strap. I'd recommend that you just get this started a little bit and then look at where your bike is in terms of its straightness uh, or level. And then you're going to alternate to each strap and compress the suspension down to what is most appropriate for you. So once I've got the initial straps tied down, um, this is not finished by any stretch of the imagination but the bike is gently secured. At this point, now that I've got my two main front straps on, I'm going to remove my helper strap carefully. And I'm going to raise the cruiser lift up to about three quarters of the way uh, to the travel or to the top uh, location. The reason why I'm going to do that is it's easier for me to access the straps that I'll be tightening, uh, as well as put on the rear straps. And lastly, I can see exactly where the bike is and make sure that it's level once it's resting on the suspension of the uh, coach. So now that the bike is up, we're gonna secure the rear straps and we're also gonna tighten down the front straps. Um, as you can see, I'm also looking to make sure that the motorcycle is straight and that it's not pitching from one side to the other. Kale is going to come by and show you how it looks pretty straight to me. All right, the next step for me before I tighten down these front straps, and they are a little bit loose, um, but we do have the kickstand here to protect us, which is still down, um, is I secure the rear straps. And I do that so that I press the rear suspension and then I do the front last and I know it's really pulling it forward and up into this front uh, stopper bar for the front wheel. Let's do that. Once you get pretty close to tight, it's probably a pretty good idea to put up your kickstand. Uh, most manufacturers are going to tell you that if you're uh, in a situation where you're strapping down your bike to not leave the kickstand down because as the bike bounces you want to use the suspension of the bike to absorb the bounces and not this uh, kickstand. This kickstand could also be damaged if left in the down position. It is. Now that that's up and our rear straps are tight, we're going to tighten down our front straps. This is pretty tight and that feels pretty good. It's going to move, that's normal. Uh, your bike uh, suspension is going to absorb a lot of those bumps and it probably looks a little bit worse than it actually is. Just take care to make sure that your front wheel is locked into this, uh, this area because if the wheel turns that could uh, really loosen your straps and put you in a bad spot. Once your straps are all secure and you verify that the bike is vertical and level, um, then you're going to want to tie off your straps. And that's a safety precaution that we do to make sure that if the ratcheting mechanism in a strap does release for one reason or another, a knot is there to protect the strap from releasing completely. Lastly, you want to make sure you tie off the ends of your straps to make sure that they don't dangle. Uh, there's a lot of methods. Our bike is, is pretty rough around the edges, so we just tie it right around the rear wheel. Now that you've seen our best practices for loading your motorcycle when you're alone onto the cruiser lift, make sure to complete the procedure by installing your locking pins and releasing the tension from the winch before you travel. If you need more details on how to do that, you can check out our cruiser lift overview video, which we'll put a link for as well.
Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to the blog directly on livinglight.net and you'll receive email updates of all of our posts. Wow.